you anything. Look up why big tires decrease fuel mileage before we start. I'm trying to settle an argument right now. Fuel mileage right there. Decease. Good word. <laughs> why do my tires die? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was right because they're heavier. That's not what you said. You said I, you weren't sure why. I said I wasn't sure, but I guessed and I said I think it's because they're bigger and they're heavier, so the engine's got to work harder. Yeah. What was your guess? I didn't have one. I had no idea. I thought, it, I thought you were lying. I didn't <sighs> think it was even a thing. So, what are we going to do tonight? Oh, are we filming? Mm hmm. Oh, well then. I, I think and we're back! <laughs> <laughs> I think we should do our um, our questions, our rapid fire first date icebreaker questions. Do you know anything about dating nowadays? No. At all, like with the no, apps or I anything don't. like that. Well, I mean, I know. What well. apps are you on behind my back? <laughs> well. <laughs> so we were having a conversation the other day about. <clears throat> it feels so weird, like talking like there's actual people sitting here. You know what I mean? Yeah, you are so much better at it than me. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with my hands. <laughs> we thought it'd be a good idea to do like a like an icebreaker, like first date episode. Like, how do you kind of? Because it's, it's awkward. I don't know. Like, I grew up where you had to actually call people on the phone, talk to people in person. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all these dating apps where you can just. Well, you had, didn't you have AOL and the AIM, AOL Instant Messenger? Yeah, but that was just. Oh, that, that, I had that. I like the dial-up connection? Mm, yeah. <laughs> All that nonsense. So we thought it'd be fun to do an episode of various ice-breaking questions, like ways to kind of ease the tension of a first date, right? Yeah, how, I mean, how would you describe it? I don't know. I, I wanted to do this in a way of just like rapid fire, like what would, first thing that comes to mind, what's your answer? We can do that, but I don't know why you want to get through this so fast. You guys intimidate the shit out of her. <laughs> what our problem is. This episode's brought to you, but not really brought to you by Don Julio. Right? Julio. <laughs> so, with that being said, Brianna and I are going to teach all of you how to break the ice on a first date. What was that thing, scene from Hall Pass? How much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. <laughs> <laughs> What's the guy's name? Fred Searing. Uh, yeah, Fred Searing. <laughs> All right, so this first category is funny icebreaker questions. I'm going to read the questions. Okay. Because I have that good movie theater voice. Yeah, I know. All nasally and Jewish. <clears throat> Brianna, ice here. <laughs> what is one article of clothing that someone could wear? That would make you walk out on a first date with them. Backwards hat. Boom. Backwards hat. I was going to say bandana. Oh. But who the fuck wears a bandana on a first date? Oh. Probably got a little, like, towards Hopkinton, Westerly area. <laughs> I'm going to also go with backwards hat, so good answer. Number two. The zombie apocalypse is coming. Who are three people you want on your team? Oh, God. And I'm going to add to that and say, and why? Three people oh. you want on your team. I know one of mine. Obviously you. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm assuming that we're already together with this. Oh, okay. So you pick three people, I pick three people. Then we have like a super team of meatheads. Okay. So you and I are preparing for the zombie apocalypse. Who do you bring? Well, I'm going to bring my sister. My sister because she... Bitch is ruthless. Yeah, she is. <laughs> She'll rip your throat out. <laughs> so definitely... She fears nothing. Yeah, definitely Carissa. Does she know how to shoot a gun? She'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She'll eat the bullets and spit them at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Carissa. Oh, God. Who do I want to take with me? I don't know. This It's a tough, like a real scenario. I know. I'm trying to think. Like life or death. First person that pops in my head is Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, he's dead. I know, but I don't know why. <laughs> I just want him. Like, if I'm going to die, I want to die with you and Leslie Nielsen. That's a pretty tall order, Nordberg. <laughs> Well, we're not going to die because we're going to put together a super Come on, team. you got your sister. Oh. Think, if God. you had to survive a zombie apocalypse, who could you survive with? Your sister's a nurse, so that actually makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I know. You I, get two I really for thought one. that one through. You get a psychotic Italian who can also... Save my life. ...kind of administer an IV. Yeah. Sarah Murray. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Sarah Murray. <laughs> no. 
Um, I don't. I honestly don't. This is awful. Okay, so you're gonna die. Okay, yeah, I'm dead. All right, so I'm assuming now that you're dead, I have your sister. So I inherited a fourth person. Yep. My first person is Matt Flynn. Oh yes, Matt Flynn. Oh, I charge I'm five on Instagram. I'm, charge I, five. I want that. I want, I want Matt that. Flynn. I want Donald Trump. I just want Donald Trump with me. And my third person, I probably need someone who could cook up a good dead zombie. Jada De Laurentiis. Fuck her. She spits her food out after she tries she it. Does. She's full of shit. Bobby Flay. Oh, yeah. I don't pick him. All the, that guy's a master with steaks. He could turn deceased zombie meat into a hell of a steak, I bet. So I got your sister, Matt Flynn, Bobby Flay. I'm going, I'm taking Leslie Nielsen. I'm bringing, I'm digging him up. I want Leslie Nielsen. Well, you added another person because you said Trump. So I got five. I get your three. You broke the rules. <laughs> yeah, fuck the rules. You, so I get your three. <laughs> I don't like this question. What is your most used emoji? I don't like emojis, but mine's the flexing bicep. Mine's probably the one that has the slits for eyes and a slit for a mouth. Like, that's like making that face. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a good one. What was your worst style choice ever made? Oh, boy. I have a couple. I have one I remember very well from junior year of high school. I don't know why. I went to school one day dressed up as a chulo. It was unbelievable. Cholo? Chulo? What do they call those Mexican gangsters? Chulo. I looked, right. like, I looked like a groupie for Cypress Hill for one day. So I have a couple. Um, one I think definitely would be my name necklace. <laughs> name necklaces were dope back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You didn't ever wear like one of those flea market like Tweety Bird like dressed as a gangster t-shirts. One of those? I definitely had one. Fucking loser. I had one. The other would probably be... Dave Hopper, if you're out there. <laughs> um, I went through a phase where I had to have every single color Air Force One sneaker. Yeah, that was me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this We're right there. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> I thought it would have been like overalls or something. But... Oh, no, that, no I did, I'm not embarrassed about those. Those are my favorite. What was the worst haircut you ever had? Oh, God. The worst haircut ever, which I don't know why I did this. I went from having really long hair to really, really short hair. Really drastic move. I hated it. It was longer in the front, and it was stacked in the back. And, I mean, we see what, we're, what I'm working with here. It wasn't pretty. I had a mohawk when I was a kid. I remember we were younger. Chris Volker had a mohawk, but it made sense because he was big and badass and played a bunch of sports. And, like, I waited, like, a year after he was done rocking his to get mine. And I kept it for, like, two days, and my mother made fun of me, so I got rid of it. <laughs> She's also the one that gave it to me, so. <laughs> Who was your childhood actor or actress crush? Aw, oh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Kathy Island. You knew that. I did know that. Yeah, Kathy Island. And Jonathan Taylor Thomas. JTT. He was my favorite. I loved him. Gross. <laughs> if you were a wrestler, what would your entrance theme song be? Oh, God. Either Ozzy Osbourne, Crazy Cr Train, Crazy Train. Or, or Over the Top. Who sings that? They're both Ozzy Osbourne they songs, are. aren't okay, they? Yeah, that's what I thought. What would mine be? I am a real American. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, I am a real American. <laughs> That'd be Matt Flynn's entrance song. Yeah, it would be. I don't know what mine would be. If you had to put a song to me, what would it be? Onyx Slam. That's you putting the dishes away. I know. <laughs> I don't know what my song would be. I don't know. Holy shit. I don't really. Does that mean I don't have a personality? What does that mean? No, I think we could all vouch for that, but... I'm going to come back to that because I don't know. Okay. Oh, this is easy. Have you ever been told you look like someone famous? Who was it? Jennifer Aniston and Vin Diesel. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston when I was blonde and probably... You still look like Jennifer Aniston. No, I don't. If she was Italian Which and had nice breasts. Pretty sure she's Greek. She's Greek? I think so. Because... That's not her real name, if I'm not mistaken. Who do, who did people besides who did who was that? <laughs> who have I been told I look like besides Vin Diesel? The Rock, which you love to hear. Who else? If The um, Rock was Italian, a couple of black guys. Uh, oh yeah, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. I I did used to get Kobe Bryant. Black, and, you look like a white Kobe. Somebody Bryant. told me when I was younger I look like Tupac. You do not look like Tupac. I don't think I look like Tupac no. either. Mm -mm. No. But Brad But I Marsh do like to hit him up, so. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Brad Marchand. You really do. From the Bruins. That's yeah. probably the most recent. Yes, Brad Marchand. What did you name your first car? The Vag Machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I named my first car. The Sable? I don't think it had a name. 
What did you name your car? I'm going to name it right now the flamethrower. It's the one that caught fire because I hooked the speakers up wrong when I was oh. driving. I blacked out at the wheel and drove through someone's mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call it five alarm. <laughs> Uh, does your current car ha- cause does your current car have a nickname and what is it? The silver bullet because I speed everywhere. It's also a sex toy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's mine? White lightning? La Flama Blanca? Yeah, La Flama Blanca. La Flama I Blanca. Like that. That's better. <laughs> you have your own late night talk show. Who do you invite as your first guest? Let's let's up the ante a little bit. Give me your answer, and then I'm going to let you give me a second answer, but I'm not going to tell you what category yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just give me your answer. Who would your first guest be? God, I don't even know. Henry Cavill with a mustache? Fuck. Actually, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to be a rebel here. Yep. He's in her uh, top three hit list. Can we tag him in this so he knows? I wonder if he'd come to Rhode Island to meet you. I don't think so. <laughs> I'd let it happen. <laughs> So now he's living. So you get Henry Cavill as your first guest. Yep. What if you can bring somebody back from the dead to interview them? Who do you have um, a poster of downstairs? From uh, Gina, G. Russo. Oh, Audrey Hepburn? Yeah, would you want to talk to her? Uh, you just thought she was cool? I just liked her a little bit, but... I mean, but you don't want to talk to her. I don't really You're care really cool, has, but keep a fucking distance. I don't really distance. care what she has to say. Um, honestly, I don't know. Whitney Houston. I want to talk to her. I want to know what happened with all that. Fucking Bobby Brown. Yeah, ruined her. What a piece of shit. All right, so if I had a talk show... Michael Jackson. That's who I want, actually. I changed my mind. And you can get him to like tell you the tell truth? Tell me the truth. Did you really sniff that kid's butt? Don't even say that, but we all know what's what we're referring to. He's a butt we sniffer. Don't, we don't... <laughs> <laughs> who would you bring back? You have to answer. Well, I gotta do both. So if I had a late night talk show, who would I bring on right now? Honestly, Robert Downey Jr. I love the man as an actor, but his story, like what he came from with his mm. troubled past, the drug addiction and all that, how he couldn't even get insured to be in movies to what he's become now. I think he'd be interesting to talk to him. If I could bring one person back from the dead, no brainer. Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I would, I would see if we could reenact some Police Squad episodes. <laughs> yes. Um, if a movie was made about your life, what genre would it be and who would play you? Oh, God. What, what, uh, what genre are we looking at? I'm thinking my life would be a dramatic, oh, uh, God. A dramatic mess? <laughs> no, it could be a uh, psychological thriller. <laughs> the Tales of an Italian Gemini. Or, Two um, women, one body, seven personalities. <laughs> um, who would play me? She'd have to be hot. I don't know. Um, who has a... who? It would have to be like a porn star. Like somebody with oh a body like yours. Oh my God. <laughs> There's uh, nobody in Hollywood built like you because they all have eating disorders. I know who'd play me. We need to cut this out. Fuck no. Joe Rogan would play me. Yes, he would. Yes, he absolutely or would. Or The Rock or... No, no, no. I don't look like The Rock. I have his charisma, his sense of self... And his magnetic charm, but I don't look like him. Okay. We share the same barber, though. Mm. Joe Rogan would play me. <laughs> <laughs> and what genre would I be? Oh, God. What are those called? Dramedies? Dramedies. Mm, you'd, it would be a dramedy. Dramedy. Because you are either... So, wait, so who's going to play you? Jennifer Aniston. I don't think so. She'd, have, fine. To get, fine. she'd have to get her boobs done. Okay. And put some meat on her carcass. She's too skinny. <laughs> If you were famous, what would you be famous for? Sex tape. <laughs> you or me? Me. Oh. <laughs> and my stage name would be The Punisher. Um, Top that. I don't know. I can't. You st- It's not fair. You had time to review these. No, I didn't. I honestly didn't look. I looked at like six of these when I was at, I was at work when I printed this up. <laughs> Hashtag lifespan. If you were famous, what would you be famous for? I would say I would be a cook, I, a chef. Thank you. I, yeah. That's what I wanted to say. You'd be a famous chef. All yeah. right. So I really wouldn't be famous for a sex tape. I think no, we all know. I don't it ha- think so either. It's going to have to last longer than 30 seconds. So I would say, what would I be famous for? Comedy. Yeah. You'd be a comedian. Comedy. Or a, or a motivational speaker. A funny motivational speaker. Yeah. Played by Joe Rogan. Yeah. Best friends with Leslie Nielsen. Yep. In a car that catches fire. <laughs> See the story? <laughs> Putting itself together. You have to sing karaoke. What song do you pick? Can we do a duet? 
We could. Starship. I'll let you pick the song. Starship. Nothing's, Nothing's gonna, gonna stop, stop us, us now. All right, so that'd be your song. Yep. Mine would be, I would be all the members of Two Live Crew, and you'd be the girls talking in the background singing "Me So Horny." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs>